This Thanksgiving week, many of us will travel by train, plane, or automobile to reach our holiday destinations. AAA estimates more than 55 million Americans will travel more than 50 miles. Now, a new rail line linking Miami to Orlando is giving Florida its first taste for the potential of high-speed rail. Chris Van Cleve is riding the rails right now in Florida. Chris, good morning. Well, good morning. Next, next stop, West Palm Beach, eventually Orlando. This is the Bright Line system. They've just opened this line all the way to Orlando in the last couple of months. They say they're making money. They've seen a bump for the holidays. And how they did it, experts say, could really be a model for linking cities across the country. Thanksgiving week on Florida's Bright Line means a milestone. Carrying its five millionth rider since 2018. The trains that can hit a top speed of 125 miles an hour have seen ridership jump 116% this year. And the company expects to carry 4.3 million passengers annually between South Florida and Orlando by 2025. It actually feels like Europe. Jack Fernandez takes it monthly between Palm Beach and Miami and says he'll never make that drive again. You can get work done. You can make phone calls. You don't have to worry about the stress of having accidents in front of you and the uncertainty. While the cost for public projects like California's high-speed rail have ballooned and are years behind schedule, Brightline built its initial service between West Palm and Miami in about four years on an existing freight line. Its newly opened second phase to Orlando runs along an expressway, which sped up permitting and construction. It will eventually extend all the way to Tampa. The company also has a near shovel-ready project running along Interstate 15 to link the Los Angeles area with Las Vegas, a $12 billion effort that could be ready in as little as four years. We're in the pay for it part, but we're very, very optimistic that we'll be in a good place on that by the end of the year. Brightline Chairman Wes Edens. Is there a world where the U.S. gets true high-speed rail? The world's going to get true high-speed rail with our Vegas project, 100%. So the, we think the trains will actually go in excess of 200 miles an hour. It's less a question of exactly the speed, it's more the time savings. There's no doubt that there are many, many corridors in the United States that would fit this bill where you're going to save people a considerable amount of time. So how much time do you save me if I go Brightline to Orlando from Miami? We think on average between one to two hours. Transit experts point to success in Europe and Asia as proof that high-speed rail can be successful linking cities that are about 150 to 400 miles apart. But those projects will require significant public funding. We will never see high-speed rail without substantial public investment to build it, and we will never see it without a substantial public commitment to operate it. The bipartisan infrastructure bill set aside $66 billion for rail. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg tried Brightline last month. We're putting our money where our mouth is, but when uh, private enterprise can play a big role in it, then those taxpayer dollars go that much further. While the nation's fastest trains lag behind those in Europe, Acela moves about 100,000 people daily between Washington, D.C., New York, and Boston. Amtrak's long-term plan, if fully funded, would look to add similar higher-speed corridors throughout the country by 2035. The traveling public really needs to see how promising rail is before they get excited about additional markets. They need to see more examples than the Acela. Yeah, so then we'll be able to see markets beyond that as well. They run about 100,000. Amtrak President Roger Harris. It's not just about distance, it's really about congestion because people don't want to be frustrated sitting in their car all day. And that's the sales pitch for a rail corridor like Brightline, is getting people out of their cars and into these seats. You know, you got Wi-Fi, you can work, they'll bring food and drink to you. The seating is assigned, and I'm told the leather on the train is the same leather as in a Lamborghini. The ride to Orlando, by the way, about three and a half hours. I've never made that drive in three and a half hours, Gail. See, I actually think that's a and good I idea. I had a flight that came in 20 minutes early. I like what Wes Eden said there. I'm a big fan of Wes Eden's, who said you could save an hour to two hours. He's I waiting like for you to course. come ride the rails with him, Gail. Well, he doesn't have to ask me twice I'm there. Did you tell people don't look at me when I'm talking? Because everybody's just sitting there like you're not standing in the aisle speaking. <laughs> Very nice, Chris Van Cleve. I think they are wishing this was the quiet car, to be totally honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you always add to any party. Thank you very much, Chris Van Cleve. <laughs>